Good evening. Welcome to the Cabarrus County Board of Education Combined Work Session and Business Meeting for the month of July. Today is Monday, July 8, 2019. I'll call the meeting to order. I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Move to adopt the agenda. Second. Motion by Mr. Harrison, second by Mr. Walter. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Board members, next up we have the approval of minutes from the June 3rd work session, June 10th business meeting, and the budget amendment meeting on June 27th. Any questions or comments? I'll take a motion to approve the minutes. Move. Do you have a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Harrison made the motion. Mrs. Grimsley made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes 6-0. Um, and next we have the uh, board chair and superintendent comments. I just wanted to um, remind folks that the uh, Concord Afton Sunset Rotary Club, of which Mrs. Grimsley and I belong to, um, is again sponsoring the nine school tools drive this year in conjunction with Channel 9, WSOC TV. Um, we will be having two collection events, uh, one at the Walmart on 29, it's called Concord Commons, and the second at the Walmart on uh, Concord Mills Boulevard deride and Concord Mills Boulevard. Um, the first one on 29 is on August 3rd. They're both Saturdays and the second is on August 10th. And the beneficiaries of these school dr supply drives um, are all of Cabarrus County schools and all of Kannapolis City schools. So last year we, we um, rallied up over 20,000 items. Uh, the schools were most appreciative. Uh, in most cases, the guidance counselors, social workers kept the supplies of the schools. Um, and gave them to students uh, in need and sometimes transient students and whatnot who didn't have much. So um, it's very gratifying and board members, I'll be calling on you again uh, to assist. I know most of y'all did um, deliveries to schools and that was a great way just to show support for our, our uh, start of the school year. So Dr. Ladder. What, what oh. time, do you know the time on the third and the 10th? 10, 10 to three. 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. <clears throat> so, and I will be posting it. Um, some of the folks know that we have a nine, Cabarrus Nine School Tools Facebook group. I'll be posting it on there as well. Um, and I think Mrs. Grimms is actually the media chair for the Rotary Club, and she reposts it on uh, other sites as well. So, we appreciate that. Dr. Lauder? Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I hope everyone is enjoying their summer break. As a reminder, our school nutrition department is offering children age 18 and younger in our community free lunches through August the 16th. No ID or reservations are required. Visit www.cabarrus.k12.nc.us slash free summer meals for a list of sites. Broadcasts of the class of 2019 graduation ceremonies are now available to watch on demand <clears throat> on our district YouTube channel. You can also watch the ceremonies on TV 21 on Spectrum Cable. Visit the district website for a list of those air times. <laughs> Students at Wolf Meadow Elementary School head back to school later this month on July 22nd. Since we will not meet again before they will start up with school, we just want to send them well wishes to have a great beginning to the school year. In preparation for the new school year, I want to encourage everyone to download the Cabarrus County Schools mobile app. The app is available in the online iTunes and Google Play app stores for free and simply search Cabco Schools. The mobile app offers a constantly updated feed of district news and events with photos and links to the district's website and social media sites. Users also can customize the app by selecting their preferred schools to receive news and updates. Users also can choose to receive push notifications about such items as breaking news, updates about school closures, and calendar changes. Looking ahead, some important dates for our 2019-20 school year. August 8th will be the first day for students at both of our early colleges. August 13th and 14th is Safety Town, which is actually sponsored by the Junior Charity League of Cabarrus County. That takes place at Pitt School Road Elementary. And August 26th will be the first day of school for all of our other Cabarrus County schools. So again, we just want to wish everyone a really um, nice rest of the summer as we get ready to crank school back up. Thank you, Dr. Louder. Uh, we'll now move down on our agenda to the guest speakers. In accordance with Board Policy 2310, a part of each business meeting will be set aside for citizens to address the board through public comment. Each speaker will receive three minutes to present comments. 
And the rest of the information is in the agenda there regarding the signups. And we do have two uh, folks who signed up to speak tonight. The first uh, is Nancy Friesfager. Welcome. That, there you go. Is that it? Yep. Okay, thank you. Madam Chair, Dr. Lauder, and board members, I would like to encourage the Board of Education to put Beverly Hills Elementary School back into the five-year plan. New data from the Bar Morrisburg Architect Firm indicates that the school can be rebuilt at a significantly lower cost than the original staff estimate. Take a breath, rethink the situation, vote to build a new school on the same site, and reverse the decision to vacate. Allow the students to remain at, element, at Beverly Hills Elementary School until you commit to the construction documentation from architects and engineers and have the capital funding. When you have the capital plan and are ready to break ground, then make a decision about the necessity of vacating the students. This board and county staff are data driven. We have new data and the new data shows two options for rebuilding on site are possible and it is fiscally responsible to do so. Since the decision to vacate was based on old data, why not move forward with your initial plan to have Royal Oaks Elementary School as a swing school while Beverly Hills Elementary School and the other two elementary schools in Center City Concord are respectively rebuilt? Children from these three schools would swing over to Royal Oaks Elementary School while the renovations take place on their home campus. Then they swing back when work is complete. How these three schools are handled in the coming years is important, not only to the alignment of the county elementary schools, but also to the communities they serve and the students they house. When the swinging is concluded, it might be worthwhile to use the extra seats at Royal Oaks Elementary School to transition into higher grades for fine arts students until a fine arts high school can be built. Someone asked me recently, what happened to that initial plan? I do not know the answer to that question. Something happened and plans changed. What I do know is that the students at Beverly Hills Elementary School are succeeding academically in spite of a dilapidated building. True student success in the educational growth is overlooked when we focus only on the quality of the building and not what is inside of it. Teachers will tell you the small elementary schools are best for student success. <coughs> Research shows that children attending these smaller schools have more confidence and are better equipped to succeed in the larger high schools. Shouldn't the children be focused on learning and loving school instead of worrying about the uncertainty of their future? Do what is best for these children. Make the right decision. Keep Beverly Hills Elementary School open. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next we have Jim Fulton. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Superintendent, members of the board. If I just had an ounce of her grace and poise, I'd probably get farther in the world. Um, uh, in, in, the, in his opening remarks at the last uh, school board meeting, the superintendent failed to explain how closing Beverly Hills would provide any benefit to its students, parents, or their community, but instead attempted to minimize the hardship students will face if they are sent to Royal Oaks simply by saying the new school is just two and a half miles away from the existing one. What he didn't say is that the two and a half miles crosses a major interstate that completely separates the new school from the Beverly Hills community, thus violating a basic principle of redistricting, which says a district should not cross geographic boundaries. He also didn't say that the bus route from Beverly Hills to Royal Oaks must follow major <clears throat> thoroughfares with high traffic densities, which poses safety concerns, increases travel time and transportation costs. And he didn't say that parents from single car families who can now walk to their school for conferences and school functions will either not be able to attend or do so only at personal expense and hardship. He also said that because Beverly Hills is in such bad shape, he thought the Title I students there might appreciate a nice new building. If he truly wants to help the students he perceives to be at risk, the best thing he can do is keep them in a small school with an intact community support system. And if it's a new school he thinks they deserve, then by all means, build one to replace what's there. 
A constant refrain I've heard throughout the discussions about closing Beverly Hills, both from members of the Board of Education and from the County Commission, is that the school board has been one the county can work with, which, as I understand it, means a willingness of the superintendent and the school board chair to subordinate themselves, the interest of our students and the interest of our communities to the financial constraints imposed on it by the County Commission. If this posture is maintained, our existing schools will continue to deteriorate, our teachers will continue to leave, and our students will not be provided with the education they deserve. The school board and the superintendent should feel empowered to demand whatever is required to provide the best possible education for our students, whatever is required to construct and maintain the facilities needed to achieve this, and feel obligated to present it to the county commission without any closed door meetings in between. The public can then decide whether they are willing to fund what the BOE considers necessary or not, and I wager they'll support whatever the Board of Education believes to be in the best interest of our children. Citizens and civic leaders have spoken passionately and persuasively about the importance of these schools to the history and fabric of our neighborhoods, and expert consultants hired by this board have demonstrated the economic benefit of replacing these small schools in kind so their location, character, attributes, and value to the community can be maintained and families continue to express their support by moving here to take advantage of the educational options our smaller schools provide. I encourage all the board members who support our neighborhood schools to have the courage of their convictions, get a new school for Beverly Hills site on the capital plan, and reverse the vacate. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. The next item on our agenda is 6.01 regarding the DPI technical modernization project. And Ms. Cutts will speak to us about that. Yes. Good afternoon, board. Um, <laughs> As stated, uh, we're going to talk about a technical school business modernization, and hopefully at the end of the PowerPoint presentation you'll know what that means. Okay, So I'm going to try to stick the script here. Um, in the overview, you know, what are we here for? What am I talking to you about? I need general consent um, for us to move forward with changing our financial and our HR software. So that's what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about ERPs. Um, th through this process, an enterprise resource planning is a process used by companies to manage and integrate the important parts of their business. So keep that in mind, integrating parts of our business. An ERP software system can integrate our planning, purchasing inventory, sales, marketing, finance, human resources, and more. Again, kind of the integration component there. So as we move forward, um, we're going to refer to the software as an ERP solution, software solution. For this, it means integrating our financial and HR software. Sorry, I'm adjusting my screen a little bit so I can see it. Okay, thank you. Thanks. So to give you a little bit of history about our, our softwares, school systems in North Carolina have generally had two options for financial software with the exception of Charlotte and Wake, and you know, they're big enough to do what they want to do, essentially. Um, so all other systems either had what's called Link or SunPack as an option. Cabarrus County Schools uses Link as their software, financial software solution, and we use HRMS and Apple Tracks for our HR software. Um, you can see there's three components just right there that have to interface and integrate and work together or work against each other um, with our current system. North Carolina has historically been a closed market for financial software vendors uh, for two reasons. One, because there's a significant complexities related to school systems in general and their payrolls, especially their payrolls. Um, and then due to implementation costs associated with selecting a different vendor. So why, why are we talking about this now? What's changed? Three primary reasons. One, the legislator. So every year the legislator is asking for data from DPI, from us, from whoever that they can think they can get the information. With our current systems, the data is not readily available. They won't ease and they won't quick. And it's not, not that way now. So they have supported financially. They put $19 million, was funded at the state level for this project in 1718. The project went a little bit slower than anticipated. So there was no funding allocated in 1819, but there was carryover money. And this year in the conference budget, obviously we know it's not approved yet, but um, anticipated there'll be $12 million of additional funding that's included in the 1920 budget. Reason number two, Wake, Cumberland, and Guilford 
very large districts um, wanted and needed an ERP solution, but the implementation costs were unrealistic for districts to pay. The implementation costs are millions. So for a district our size, it could be a million to two million. For a, for a wake, um, five to 10 million, a just significant implementation cost that districts just cannot afford. Um, so the third reason is some pack users. So the, the, ven the other vendor that most districts use, the software is literally failing. Um, they are losing financial data on a daily basis. And then this vendor, because they can't keep up with the requirements, have doubled or tripled their fees. Um, and so these districts are really in, in a, different, a difficult place. Okay, that's not us, um, but these districts are in a difficult place. So just to keep in mind the process flow, so this started with session law in 2016. Um, I believe I provided you a link with the session law. <coughs> then it's uh, state superintendent's responsibility to implement the session law. And then Mark Johnson, state superintendent, hires Dr. Mike Spano um, and creates a department called School Business Modernization. And it is his responsibility to ensure that the LEAs, the school districts, and DPI are both modernized. Okay. So this is the session law. Um, and then basically the session law it says some go out, do a report, tell us what we need to do to be modern. And there the report to the General Assembly, I've given you a link to that. So key points, things that you should be taking away from, from this is that school systems should be using financial and HR software on a modern platform. And none of the current systems or vendors were deemed to be modern. So the state issued an RFP, and there's a link to this RFP and the supporting documentation there. The security aspects of the data starts on page 58 of the RFP. The RFP was awarded to two vendors School systems will then select the vendor that, that is based on their individual needs. Um, the expectation is that all school districts will convert within four years because um, it'll take a while to convert 115 systems. The state and DPI, state slash DPI, is paying for all of the implementation cost and they are also paying for the first year of software cost. The awarded vendors are, are two. Um, on the left, Munis uh, platform is a Tyler product, or the Tyler is a Munis platform. Cherry Road is an Oracle platform. Um, Cabarrus, we have, we've done our review of the products, and we have selected the Oracle Cherry Road solution. And so for some of the reasons, this, these are the reasons why, or some of them anyway. Oracle is a more robust system. It provides more user reports and ease of use. Um, it's an upgrade from what we have now. There's more functionality there. Tyler is very similar to what we have now, um, but the price would be much more expensive, but we would be getting a very similar product. So we're gonna pay more. I want more functionality. Um, Software is going to allow us to be more efficient by eliminating double entry in multiple systems. Um, another point is that Oracle was chosen by DP, DPI as their um, ERP solution. So I would not be surprised, and I've heard rumors, that eventually all districts will have to go to Oracle. And if that holds true, we'll have one conversion in districts that select Tyler will have two conversions. So that's not in concrete right now, but it's my expectation that that might happen because DPI is gonna be on Oracle. Link and Cherry Road, so Link is our current financial vendor and Cherry Road Oracle are forming a partnership to ease with the transition. So all of our current data, Link is gonna be there supporting our new vendor, Oracle, to make that transition work better. There's some future cost avoidance. Um, so other software costs, this software has a lot of modules and options and as we learn what they do, we might be able to replace other systems, like for example, an inventory system. 
um, other costs like a server and AS400 hardware costs, um, those will, will be non-existent. This is the standard product bundle as the RFP went out from DPI. And this is what we get. I'll just give you just a second to look over that. A lot of components there that we don't currently have. Okay, I'll go to the next one. So the big question is cost. What is this going to cost us? Um, the negotiated, I was able to negotiate a subscription price of $9 per student, which includes the standard product bundle, which is what you just saw. And then I was able to negotiate five other modules that we wanted here locally. Those modules are talent acquisition, which is a, a piece of the HR, um, three project and grant modules, which helps me with construction and grant management, and then the HR help desk. Um, I was uh, able to get that all within the $9 per student. DBI has agreed to pay for the additional implementation cost associated with the five other modules. And if we're using a 33,232 number for ADM, obviously that's going to change from year to year. Our Cherry Road Oracle cost would be $299,088. Currently we pay about $100,000 for Link, HRMS, Apple Tracks, Care, and AS400 support. We know that we're going to eliminate those. So we're paying currently about 100000 for all of those products. The new software is significantly more than that. It's about three times what we're currently paying. For the first year, DPI pays. For future years, these are our options. And we're strongly going to advocate at the school level, at the LEA level, for DPI to continue to pay these costs in future years. The legislator has been supportive of this project and it's very possible that they may continue to do that. So that's our first option. Secondly, if, if the state doesn't come through for us, we're gonna have to go to the county and ask for money in the continuation budget because it is a continuation expense is something we're gonna have to do. So, and then, uh, as I was preparing this presentation, on, on July the 2nd, our current vendor, Link, announced that our fees were going from approximately 30000 to approximately 165000 So, um, we're going to have a significant increase in our financial and HR software, whether we do this or, or anything else. Um, and there's some concern with the HRMS software. It's not supported anymore on the HR side. The Apple Tracks, we've, we've got a really good deal because we piloted a lot of things. Not sure that that would hold up in the future. Um, so it is gonna cost more. This is the not to exceed amounts for the RFP. And just to give you an idea, so the Tyler product is a less expensive product. Um, I've got it highlighted there for Cabarrus. You can see that our annual cost would be 232624 with an implementation cost of approximately a million dollars. Okay, this is not the, the product we chose. This is the Cherry Road product that we chose. This is, remember, this is the maximums that these vendors can charge us. And so the maximum was $465,000, 248 for the operating and then $2.3 million for the implementation cost. Now remember in the last couple of slides, I told you that I was able to negotiate that price down to $9 per student, which is about $299,000. So we're not gonna pay the 465, we're gonna pay 299,000 for this product. And I'm gonna get five more modules that weren't included in the original. So we want to be what we call as an early adopter on this. Why do we want to do that? Um, because if we do that, we're going to be an integral part of creating the golden template. And so what that does is we have significant input on the decision making for how the software will work or be programmed. Okay, we'll get to make those decisions. And then the other 100 LEAs that come in after us basically are doing it the way that we kind of set up the golden template. And a lot of districts in the area, they trust 
me and Glenda to kind of make those decisions for the district and pass those on. By doing this, by being an early adopter, I was, that's part of my negotiating power. I was able to negotiate a much lesser price. If I wait a couple of years, I'm not sure that I could get that $9. And that, that $9 stays true for five years, that's in the contract, and then it can only go up 5% in the next three-year contract. So we've got a decent contract. Um, I'm also gonna get additional technical support from the state and the vendor, um, because as an early adopter and a pilot, they've gotta get it right the first time. So they are going to flood us with resources to make sure that it's, it's done right. Um, as a late adopter, you're not gonna get those resources. Okay. So these are folks that have made their decision already. Charlotte Mecklenburg has decided to go with Oracle, Wake County, Oracle, us, and then I learned today that Guilford is going with Oracle. Um, for the Tyler Muniz, I know that Chapel Hill is going with them, Stanley County Schools, and New Hanover is going with Tyler. Okay. The next thing is I just need uh, a nod of a head to move forward with this. Um, then staff will start working on the statement of work and a contract. The statement of work and the contract is what the board will sign. Um, plan to bring that to you in August. I put probably last week that I feel confident that it should be August um, now. And then staff will work a, a full year on implementing um, and preparing for a go live date. So this is a, gonna take um, a full year to do this. Payment I'm sorry? So Payment, that's why DPI is paying for the first year because you're gonna have to be, have both systems in place. So they're going to pay for one, and we're going to pay for our old system. It's not the full first year no, it's part of the transition. Part of the transition yes. Now we're still working um, to get them to continue to pay for it in future years. Okay, well, and like the the last bullet says, we're going to advocate to make to see if we can get the state to continue to pay for it beyond the first year. Um, there, there are a lot of districts that simply are, are going to really, really struggle with the increased cost, and they have um, very, they have no option. They're going to have to do it, but they don't know where the money's coming from. So I, pardon? Um, because the state has deemed them as not modern, and everybody has to go to a modern platform. If you go to these two vendors, you're considered modern. These two vendors were deemed modern. The link system, they don't want to go get the business to upgrade. Correct. The link, the, system, the, the link system was in the RFP, and they weren't selected because they weren't deemed modern. Sounds like you're saying the link system cannot be made. Sounds like the link system cannot be modernized. Um, I expect it can be, but it wasn't at the time of the RFP. Mm -hmm. um, so when the when DPI selected made their selection, they're they're not a they're not a player. And they also so even to stay with the current vendor, we're going from thirty thousand to one hundred sixty five thousand. It's it is somewhat cheaper. But, but we would then have to have an HR solution mm -hmm. that we don't have um, and the cost associated with that. So by the time we get everything implemented and using the one system, the cost is not going to be that much more by the time we get everything integrated. Yeah, I'm guessing just from an Oracle standpoint, if it's an Oracle database, that's a relational database that becomes valuable whenever you're um, looking at creating more and different reports and having data instantly available. It's unbelievable. So. Um, dashboards, ease of use, drill down. It's, it's made for, um, it's user friendly it's for you guys. It's for the public. Are you worried about security having this being a cloud service? So Oracle, um, 
I don't want to pretend that I understand that level of security, but DPI in their RFP included all of the security attributes that were required, and, and the vendors had to meet those security attributes. And I gave you a link to the RFP requirements and that the vendors, which vendors, how they met them. Um, and so I've had Dane in, my, in our meetings to ensure that we were secure and he felt comfortable with it and um, kind of a off the, the cheek answer when we ask about um, Oracle security, kind of the response was, we are Oracle, right? And so- yeah, I mean, it's still a big deal. It's all our employee records. It's a, all our financial it's a huge records. Deal. So um, and, it should and, be a top concern. And it was, and it was in the RFP and it was addressed and it was satisfied. Um, I, and our LEA representative was satisfied. Um, I have two comments on that. So I think, first of all, I would flip that and say what I would be more concerned with is not going to, what we have currently is why there's a security concern. So that's why they're not deemed modern. So in other words, this database would be significantly more secure than what we have, and that's why that didn't make the RFP. The only other thing I would add is that I think Ms. Clutch probably didn't emphasize enough that um, the Wake County and CMS are these huge districts in North Carolina that are, you know, five times the size of us, but we're the eighth largest district in North Carolina, so we are kind of in a, a second tier, and they're really being pursued by, D, by DPI. Ms. Klutz and Ms. Jones, as she said, are they really want us to do the golden template, one, because Kelly and Ms. Jones know what they're doing, and so, one, they know how to answer that and know how to answer questions, but then also districts of, of similar size to us are very comfortable with them being the people. So it's really a compliment to Glenda and Kelly, too, to say not only um, are they capable of doing it, but DPI and similar districts want them to do it to say, hey, and you don't usually get the opportunity to work through and say, we get to create the template that other people are gonna use. And the fact that they want them to do it and they're gonna pay for it is really a compliment to our finance and HR department. So I wanna make sure you guys know, cause I don't think she emphasized that enough. It's their quality work, which means, which is why people are saying, hey, will you do this? And then, so it's an honor and then an opportunity to say, wow, we get to drive it and make it look the way we want to, which not only makes us happy, but other districts to say, hey, if they're comfortable with it, we're comfortable with it. So it's really, a plus in a lot of ways, I think, except for cost. But like like Ms. Klutz said, that's coming anyway. So yeah. what we're basically saying is when you're talking about the second largest employer in the county, security and payroll is a pretty big deal and using a non-modern system for that type of payroll is not necessarily what you want to advertise, which is why the state's saying change, right? So. So the word modern just makes me chuckle because usually in technology we say things are obsolete. Right. <laughs> we, we go the other direction. Uh, yeah, I understand. But I, I like the idea that this is an opportunity to get off the, the old AS400 format, um, which is just an well, we're anchor. Gonna everybody's going to have to do that. That's yeah. not an option. Yeah, just a boat anchor is what we call them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so board members, consensus to proceed. Ms. Carpenter, you okay? Yeah. Okay. David, Laura? Okay. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Okay, our next agenda item are the policies on the first reading, and Mrs. Burns will join us. Good evening. Tonight, um, I'm bringing five policies to you for consideration of first read. The first policy is policy 4125, homeless students. These are PLS recommended and required changes. Um, there are a lot of changes, but the majority of it is just reorganizing the policy to improve readability. <coughs> um, no substantive changes have been made to the content of the relocated information except that three additional duties have been added for the homeless liaison in section E. The new duties are items 8, 10, and 11, and those are required. And the dispute resolution process in new section D has been rewritten to comply with the revised school board uh, policy, and that is also required and then it updates the legal references. 
policy 4150 school assignment transfers and program choice enrollment this is a district requested change and in this change students only complete the renewal application forms in fifth and eighth grade so they don't have to do it every year and um, they felt that would be easier for families not to have to always send those things in um, and policy 4154 yeah can I, ask, can sure. I ask a question on that so that takes into account the other language regarding um, progression and um, responsible behavior and all those other things, right? Correct, correct. So if a student violates one of the other uh, activities, they're not automatically staying for the rest of that grade Correct. Level. That, that was just a way for every year families are asked to complete an, an they call it an intent to continue form or something to that effect. Renewal, renewal application, yeah. And now they, they're continuing the program as long as they're meeting expectations. Okay, so that last phrase covers it, yes. as long as program criteria and expectations correct, are met. Correct, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then 4154, program choice expectations and continuation. Um, on page two, we added that students who don't continue to meet the attendance and or behavioral <laughs> expectations may be exited from the program. This has been um, general practice, but we just needed to make it more specific so that it, it was clear. Um, and then uh, number two there, if it's, um, we added that a student um, would be contacted if they're not meeting those um, expectations. And the, um, they felt that when students get their five-week reports and their report cards, that, that's showing that they're, what their progress is. So if there's an issue, they will be um, notified of that and then it also talks about that renewal application in fifth and eighth grade back to number one it says under the first paragraph we have uh, interventions if they're not meeting academic uh, academics but it doesn't say anything about interventions if they're not, not meeting the attendance or behavioral <coughs> behavioral i'm i'm sorry number one on page one or two whatever you just spoke about two. okay Should well the we? expect um It says instead, right. instead of saying if you yeah. don't meet the academic expectations, you're exited from the program. It says, "Well, we provided academic information, interventions for appropriate amount of time. Do we do anything if someone's not meeting the attendance or behavioral expectations, or should we?" There are um, general in attendance interventions at all the schools, right? So, in right. other words, when you get right. to four, then there's a parent conference. There, so in other words, there that's already in place as far as general interventions for absences. And our, our MTSS um, process also um, focuses on behaviors, and they do interventions. Um, but but you're correct; it's not it's can not. Going, going, can, the listed look, in there. Can, can the committee look at something just to make it look look more consistent on that one paragraph? Mr. Shaw, did did do you have any thoughts on we that? that meeting. Oh, we certainly do that just for consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, first, first grade. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we will we will have a policy meeting before the next board meeting. So I think Yeah, we'll be I think we'll be okay with that. I forgot I was the one reading, sorry. <laughs> then on um, let's see. Policy 4240-7312, child abuse reports and investigations. These are PLS recommended and required changes. And this updates the procedure for reporting suspected child abuse, neglect, dependency, or maltreatment to reflect recent changes to the definition of abused juvenile and neglected juvenile, and a recent reassignment of reports of certain forms of maltreatment to the jurisdiction of the Department of Health and Human Services, DHHS, Division of Child Development and Early Education, and these are required. So, Basically, there are, um, depending on when, where the, the abuse or neglect is, is taking place, will, will um, dictate where they will make reports. Um, creates a separate reporting structure based on the, uh, I just said that, based on the source of the abuse. 
um, provides any uncertainty regarding the source of child abuse should be resolved in favor of reporting, sets forth consequences for failure to report, and um, section B provides that a child care facility subject to the DCDEE reporting requirement includes any DHHS licensed classroom or program operated by the school system, licensed after school programs, and licensed <laughs> developmental day programs. And section C provides that in a case under the jurisdiction of DCDEE, permission of the parent must be obtained before the child may be interviewed on school campus during school hours and that's recommended and um, updates legal references. Then policy 6220, operation of school nutrition services. These are PLS recommended and required changes, updates the non-discrimination statement to be current with USDA requirements, adds information about conflicts of interest, and updates legal references. Any questions? So I guess we will vote tonight on for the first read. Normally we have a mm -hmm. go to consent. So um, I will take a motion that we approve the policies on the first reading with the one request for review by Mr. Walter. Mr. Walter made the motion. Mr. Harrison made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. And next we'll have the policies on second reading, okay. 7.02. These policies um, were all approved last month with the exception of Animals for Instructional Purposes, Policy 3240. And this one we brought back to the Policy Committee to make sure that we were covered. Um, we just wanted our attorneys to look at it one more time and um, there were no changes, so that was brought back to second read. But I've, I've had no questions. How do people know about this one? How are, has, our, has, our, has it gone out to staff that say, hey, take a look at this? Because it does change practices that have been going on in the past. Yeah, we had um, we had several um, community. We had input from from um, agencies that bring their animals. We had input from schools and administrators and um, a couple counselors and um, our attorneys looked this over and so there was a lot of input. So you're, this. you're comfortable we've had enough input from mm -hmm. folks yeah. who might be yeah. affected by this new policy? Mm -hmm. Any other questions on that one? The rest I think we didn't have any mm -hmm. feedback on. Okay. I'll take a motion that we approve the f first read. Second read. Actually, yeah, these are second read. I see the motion down here <laughs> says second. Or says first read. Take a motion that we approve the policies presented for the second reading. Second. Mr. Harrison made the motion and Mrs. Grimsley made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes 6 0. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Burns. Next, we have item 7.03 the City of Concord in Cabarrus County. Uh, the school resource officer contracts and memorandum of understanding. Yes, um, this is generally a two-year contract um, starting uh, anticipated July 1st, 2019 upon, upon board approval and will go to June 30th, 2021. We did two-year contracts to align with the grant period um, which the funds generally come down. Um, since the last contract, we have added one SRO officer for the PLC because we changed the locations prior when they were at Jay and Freeze. We didn't need a separate officer, but now we're at a different location, so we do. We get state funds for that officer, so it's not an expense, um, out of pocket expense for us. It comes, comes through the state. Um, and we also added an elementary SRO, 
so that the two smaller schools did not have to share an SRI, so they individually have their own. So that's the change in the <coughs> contract amount. If you look at last year's contract and current year with um, those two officers and then the normal um, salary increases for the officers and benefit increases for the officers is included in that amount. Those are the, the only changes to the contract. Mr. Shaw has reviewed the contract. Uh, I'll take any questions that you have. So these are paid for by grants? Is that what you're saying? So some are. Uh, some, some of these yes, are paid so, for by grants. Yes. So our uh, high school officers are paid through through a pot of money called at-risk funds. It comes straight down from the state. So if you've got a high school, they give you an officer. Um, the middle school um, is not included in this. Basically, the county and the city provide that for us. Um, but this is an agreement with the city and there's no middle school? Sorry? This is an agreement with the city, but there's no middle school officer here? Right, because they just provide those, those officers for us. We don't pay for those. But they provided them. It was a grant years ago, and when the grant right. expired, they just continued to provide those officers for us. We don't pay for them. But so isn't there an agreement that covers something about? Not the middle school ones. Not the middle school ones. Not middle school. Should we not have a, an agreement that covers what the expectations of an officer is, just like we do in this? Amount. Even if there is no nothing amount, they're still in our schools, right? So there is an MOU about their duties and. Okay, there is an MOU that doing. covers that one. There is that. It's a separate agreement. Okay, thank you. Yeah, That's what I was. That. that was what I was looking for. Um, this is just the financial. So the financial part is we are adding an elementary school officer, and that's at our cost? We are adding an elementary school at our cost, yes. And that was in our budget? It is in our budget. Okay. I've got a question. Um, how do we determine which elementary schools and which high schools get the SROs? They all have them. Okay. And so the only determination was we, we had been sharing um, an elementary is a two smaller elementaries, I believe, are Brown McAllister and Beverly Hills, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Flipping in. So we were sharing and we only had one, but we made the decision that we really needed one at each school. And so that's the ad for the elementary schools. But all of our schools have SRO officers. So am I just missing like Mount Pleasant and... Oh, what, so there's county. also a so county agreement. Okay. Um, so the county provides part of our officers and the city provides the other part, depending okay. on whether they're in the city or the county. That's the, and the county agreement, I believe, is a five-year agreement, so it doesn't come as often okay. to you. That's why I was like, I, yeah. Yeah, there's way more than this. Right. Okay. Yes. yes. Any other questions? Okay, I'll take a motion that we approve the agreement with the city of Concord and Cabarrus County SRO contracts. And we don't have the MOU here. It's only the city of Concord contract. This, no, we don't do the MOU. Um, I think it's every five years. I know, but the, the motion says the whole thing. Oh. So we're really just approving the agreement contract. that's presented for the oh, city of Concord. Sorry, yes, it's yeah. just the contract. I'm not the motion we approve the contract. Okay, Mrs. Carpenter made the motion. Mr. Harrison did the second. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. Should I disclose I work for the City of Concord? It's yeah, not, yeah. A, not an issue with voting. Does anybody have an issue with me voting? No, I, I'm fine with you voting. Okay. Anybody, anybody else have a concern with Rob voting? No? Okay. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. And we have item 7.04 for school nutrition program. Welcome. So it's that time of year where we are ready to either award contracts or renew contracts for the upcoming school year. So the first section that we have is renewals for the bids that we had done through the North Carolina Child Nutrition Procurement Alliance. Um, these do allow uh, price increases as allowed by the bid audited by the North Carolina Procurement Alliance and the renewals are allowed per the original terms and conditions under those original bids. So the first is food and supplies. That would go again with Gordon Food Service. For the third year allowed in four total renewals, 
uh, the bottom line for the current year is about $4.8 million. The second is produce, which would go to R&H Produce. Uh, again, the third of four renewals allowed for a bottom line of about $344,000. Do you have questions on that before I move forward? Um, I was looking at the food and supplies from last year. Mm -hmm. What was in the amount for last year? The amount for last year? Last year, the, I saw it here, it says 3,389,992. Uh, that's for 1617. That was for last year. It was in our, if you go to board docs from that last year, that's the number that's oh. in there. Well, let me look. So that was in, I mean, oh, I see. So um, it looks like a 48, 43% increase in the price of food. I think that's a little outrageous. Yes. So is there a typo there? Is it 3,800,000 or is it, you're still saying it's 4,800,000? I don't believe so. I don't believe it's a typo. That was um, taken from the bid document, but that does reflect the uh, issue we've had with food costs. It is uh, substantial. Your, pro your produce costs are up 14%. Mm -hmm. This is 43% increase. And we haven't added that many students. I think if that's, if I would certainly go out and do our own bidding or something, it's a million, over a million and a half dollars. Well, a year? That's, that's when you when you are part of the procurement alliance, uh -huh. you uh, commit to bidding lot one, which is food, and you join with the other districts in the state in order to um, pool the amount of products you're going to purchase under each line item in order to get the best possible rate. So I don't think we could do really any better. Um, I, mean, I, I can't support a 43% increase in food costs. We have it added, added that many students. Um, we've got to look at something. I mean, how did, how did we, we didn't bu obviously didn't budget for another million million in our in our account, do we? I mean, how are you going to cover that? Where's that where's that coming from? Current budget, don't we? So what she's proposing to you right now is for the nineteen twenty fiscal year, mm -hmm. and we haven't adopted a budget yet. So she but would again, how build, how would you cover that? Would how would you cover that that type of an increase? After we had increased our budget, additional money-wise, raising our rates to, and you're wanting us to add that much money out? No, that's to, all included in there. But we, I yes. think we do need to know this differential. Well, I'll be certainly yeah. glad to go back and check yeah. to see if there were any errors in the spreadsheet that was right. sent to us. Um, typically, we have looked through all of that. And those are estimates based on our, our estimated usages for the coming year. Um, obviously, it may go up or down depending on that. But that is part of the problem is that food prices are going up um, pretty substantially. It's not 43 percent. My grocery bill is not up. Let me ask a question. Like, so in other words, if we are feeding 2,000 more students this year than we were feeding last year, let's say for breakfast and lunch, could that be part of the cost? In other of words, course. Oh, yes. okay. Well, that, so Absolutely. for example, I know that we certainly had an initiative this past year to feed more people breakfast, mm -hmm. right? And, we, and that is substantial. So while that may not necessarily be more um, per meal, it may cost more because we're now feeding more than we did. So I, that's just one thing to kind of throw out there and make sure people are aware of. Well, I, would a, I would ask, is it imperative that the board approve this in July or can it go to August? Is that okay? Well, the new, from my understanding, the new bid date begins in August. August 1st. Okay. So you need um, approval in July. Hmm? In other words, to be able to, she needs to, to have the approval to move forward with ordering food in August, correct? But it's for next year, right? So you, yes. you, can, you can take next year's bid or next month's bid. Well, the, it's a, it's a very, uh, when you bid with the Procurement Alliance, in order for us to rebid lot one as a local bid, we would have to basically withdraw from the procurement alliance. So we would be giving up any benefits that we receive from that group, which is a significant cost savings um, over being able to bid locally. There are almost no districts that bid lot one locally any longer. Uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg, 
uh, Cabe I'm sorry, Guilford, um, even Union County just joined and they did it on their own for years. I believe Gaston has now joined almost, there's just one or two, maybe 10, maybe 10 districts that yes. bid that locally. Is the Gordon Food Service the only one you found that was off? It's significantly off by 43%, yeah. Okay. Everything else is up, less than 14%. Well, again, if there's an increase in how many people are eating, that's not a 43% increase. Um, and so if, if yes. we have that question ahead of time, then she can be prepared for that and be able to give you the numbers, but we didn't have any questions ahead that of time would be for helpful. that. Well, yes. I have a question also, and that's not what we've been hearing, though, Dr. Louder. We've been hearing things have been down. That's why you keep saying we're having to raise these prices because the children aren't eating. And the yeah. food costs are going up. Right. Uh -huh. What I think she presented All last time was food costs are. were going up and um, that there's essentially the 10% the increase is essentially inflation. If you're following, I mean, I think we presented that whenever she talked. It's basically, you're gonna go up 3% every year is just in everything that you purchase. And so that's why the federal government essentially requires you to, to raise that 10 cents if we're not gonna do it. So that's not part of the participation, but we did have an initiative in the middle of the year, in particular with breakfast, and there are definitely more people eating than there were last year. That's certainly something that we're gonna focus on again this year. So again, it, it, there may be an increase in some of that cost, but without having that question ahead of time, it's hard to break those numbers down to say, well, what's the increase in students and what's the increase with cost but of food? I, I always, uh, I'm also concerned with the milk bed and the chemical bed. Both of those, I have real problem. I mean, I'm not gonna vote for it, I can tell you that right now, with okay. us only having one bid on them. And yes. I cannot believe in the milk especially, yes. that we only had one person participate on that. And I, I will not, I'm not gonna vote on either one of those. I agree, it is a significant problem to get um, milk bitters across, uh, I think even across the region. Um, in my previous district, we had significant problems getting people to even bid on us. Um, we had, uh, I think it's five, potential vendors that we contacted. Um, I received uh, email bounce backs where they didn't, um, the email didn't even go where it was supposed to, so we researched those companies to try to find current information, got no response on several of them, um, got no response on um, one of the three, there were four on the chemical bid. Uh, one did not respond at all to my um, invitation for bid. Uh, one told us the day of the bid that, or the bid opening that they were not going to bid and the other one, uh, the third one of the four, um, had to be disqualified because they did not bid in the correct format. So we really had no choice other than to award it to the bottom line. But if you look at the bottom line of the chemical bid, we're actually paying about four thousand dollars less than we did last year. So Definitely, we want to encourage vendors to come on board, but we also want vendors that are going to be able to um, meet our needs and appropriately service all of our schools. So we don't um, require them to state any sort of um, minimum amount of business, but we do require them, if they do bid, that they are going to be able to handle all of the business that we're able to give them. So um, being the size of district that we are, that requires a, a minimum size, but there are apparently a lot of territorial, um, that's not a really good word. For instance, a pet uh, distributor is not going to bid another pet distributor. So while there are other distributors who might bid that type of food um, or that brand, they won't cross bid someone, even though it might be their competitor, it's, it's I think just frowned upon, so they're not going to bid out on that. So I'm surprised we didn't have more bids as well, but it was not because of lack of effort of trying to find vendors, trying to find um, current information where we could reach people. We left messages, we sent emails, we just didn't really have any luck with that. So for the milk bids, um, who does Canapolis use? Stanley County, Rowan. Stanley uses Stanley Dairy, which is another pet distributor. Um, so this is a pet, this Campbell is a pet distributor? Which one, I'm sorry? The, the milk for the yes, milk. Yes, Paul Campbell is a pet distributor. Okay. Yes, that is correct. 
Um, we also send it to Dean. And we've been using them for at least 2014. Yes, we've used them for a number of years and, and have been served very well. Um, it sounds a little bit like the pharmacy consortiums, how they all agree to raise prices on certain drugs. But that, that to me sounds like if they won't cross bid, they're protecting their profit. I think they are, and I, and I think in, in some regards, a lot of these are small businesses as well. And so if they can't go to another county, and ha if they don't have all the trucks and all the drivers, they may not be able to expand as easily as, say, a Gordon Food Service or a Cisco or a large distributor that doesn't handle milk but handles um, the grocery bids. They may not be able to purchase those kind of things just on the fly in order to absorb that business. I have a proposal. Um, the August meeting, our first August meeting work session is fairly early in the month. It's August the 5th. Would that compromise you if we ask the board to approve on August 5th rather than to wait August 12th and that way the board could get her your questions and you could get the answers and feedback um, prior to that? Would that be acceptable? Yeah, I'm actually going to give you kind of a counter proposal to that is can we approve some of these okay. leaving the milk and the Gordon Foods for August 5th? Sounds good to me. Because I don't think anybody's concerned about the other ones, right? We're okay on the other I'm ones? I'm happy about the chemical, but yeah. if it is left and you're saying there's nothing else you can do, excuse me. I'm not happy about the chemical. I really would like to have enough. I really get a little edgy when I only see one bit. I agree. I, I really yeah. do. I would really like to make sure that we have, and that one is, that's in Moore's, is it not? I, I mean, I like they to see are. our local. I mean, if we've got somebody, they are. I, local. I can't believe we don't have somebody local. And, and, and I hate to see that when we only have one bid like that. When I saw that milk one, that one, uh, that just really, and that's over, that's over, half a million dollars and I mm -hmm. you know I, I that, that's a, a lot of money and I just I just really would like to see you know and and when you only got one like that that's mm -hmm. I just I just I hate to see that does they're I think they are in Mooresville I'm sorry excuse me Paul Campbell yes they is are. in Concord yes Off of, um, Gale, yeah, I believe so mm -hmm. But yeah, but it's only I mean, it's only one. No, I get it. I, I mean, we yeah, we yeah, need to have to yeah. But if if more. nobody else is doing it and just letting that one per, I mean, to me, that's easy enough to fix. <coughs> to me, it's easy to fix prices, and oh. that's that, that's actually what it sounds like happening. If everybody's saying, "Oh no, just let everybody just have that one," and I don't want to see that. You've got to, which is of course. Uh, always a possibility in any time that you're bidding. Um, I would, well, I shouldn't say I'd be surprised, but the, there were some, probably a dozen years ago or so, there was a little bit of a situation like that where many districts had to uh, receive, I guess, some compensation. It was actually before my time in school nutrition. Uh, some districts had to receive some compensation because there was a little bit of that well, going on. Well, that's why you usually want mm -hmm. to have. Is that not the case? That's why you want to usually have two or three different bids to keep I something agree. from yes. that like that happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's why I get very nervous when we don't see something like that happen. I mean, we don't have something like that happen. And it's a little well. bit like construction, too, when mm -hmm. we send out 14 offers, or, you know, a request, and then we might get three back. So sometimes you, two. Yeah, but you they just got, don't want. They have plenty of business. They're not pushing for it. But I, uh, I would feel a lot more comfortable if I well, had that. Could I, absolutely. Um, I would need a little bit of direction from the board because I do not know where else to go. I have um, asked every milk vendor that um, I know can deliver the business satisfactorily at um, with good good service, good um, quality and everything. I'm not sure exactly, like what, what exactly would this, this do you local, expect from me in the next? This is a local company, isn't it? Pardon me? This is a local Concord company, isn't it? Yes. So what, between now and the time of the next bid, what is it that you would like for me to do? Well, I'd, the, I'd like you to get uh, 
food and uh, produce on the tables for the children. <laughs> right? I and some of this sounds like it's slowing down that process. Well, we for would maybe not be good, able some to good reasons, but, but our parents need to know that the children are going to be fed. Of course they're going to be fed, but this is complicating the supply chain um, and, and that, yeah. that you're confronting, that, you're, that you've done your best, I think. Well, to, I was just going to make a note that to. I thought I recalled last year that Gordon Food had lowered their bid from the previous year and mr walter has a very nice spreadsheet here yes. that they had lowered it and we joked that they were in cabarrus county just mm -hmm. on the edge of kannapolis there um and so maybe they were giving a locals break but obviously this year there isn't so maybe they realized that they should have gone up last year instead of down um, and we're maybe paying for a little bit of difference now well when you bid through the alliance there is a what the way the bid is structured it is a cost plus fixed fee so we pay for food and supplies the same price which is their cost as every other district in the state where the um, difference comes in is the fixed fee which is basically their handling fee so the amount of whatever they take into their overhead labor or whatever, um, that is the amount that they charge us for every case that we um, process through their facility. Um, and gas obviously. prices are back up. That's probably part of it. Labor is up. Yes. So yeah. any of those type of things, if uh, fuel, any of that, if that has an impact, we will see it on the fixed fee. Um, now, they are holding our fixed fee. That's what this renewal does, is it holds that fixed fee from, when was the first year that Cabarrus did? I think it was 15, 16? Yes, the fixed fee has not increased since then. So what increases is the cost of the product. So if they have an increase in cost from their vendors, they have no choice but to pass it on because of the structure of the bid. They're, we're paying them exactly what they're paying us, and we audit it to make sure. So if they have increased food costs, we have increased food costs, even if our fixed fee remains the same. And then exactly like what Dr. Lauder said, it overall, if we have more usage because we have increased participation, the price we're paying per meal, we hope will go down. That's the whole goal of keeping a handle on prices, but the overall cost will increase as our participation increases because we're adding meals on top of that. Does that make sense? And if last year they were paying their employees along their uh, process nine, ten dollars an hour, now they're probably paying twelve, thirteen dollars an hour or yes. all of their costs have gone up. Yes. In the last year. Yes, and they cannot pass that cost on to us unless there's two things. One, if we rebid, we'll get a new fixed fee. Um, which they do have an, a possibility of giving us a lower fixed fee, but that never happens. That would be nice. Um, they can bid it the same or they can increase. Um, the only other way that they can increase would be a force majeure or a um, transportation cost. But so far we've only had transportation cost increase, I think I want to say about seven or eight years ago when um, fuel prices really went through the roof. Uh, force majeure you more often see on produce. Um, yeah, but and because, they will be temporary. Because there were two parts of that bid, they can actually pass along their extra cost through the produce or through the food cost. So I know there's that line, but in reality, if it's costing them more to bring in the food mm -hmm. um, to their warehouses and doing whatever packaging and distribution, you're, you're paying it for it on the produce or the, the food side. So. What I'd like for Ms. Almond to be able to have the opportunity to do is to give you an explanation of the history. There's always an explanation or history behind the numbers. And yeah. because we didn't have the, the information or the question in advance, we're not prepared to do yeah, that. Yeah, but you're bringing, you're bringing us a million and a half increase without, <laughs> and telling me I didn't ask the question. You ought to have anticipated that type of a question. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So what I would like to propose is to give Ms. Allman an opportunity to go back and give you an explanation of the numbers. I'm not sure that after you get an explanation of the numbers, you're going to you're going to agree, but at least you know the facts and you know the, the numbers. And I would like for her to have the opportunity to give you that information, and then you make your decision. But without having the information available to you, 
I, I just don't think it's fair to Ms. Allman to um, vote against it when we don't have the facts. Okay, what I'd like to do, first of all, a question to follow up on is ask Gordon why such a large increase this year. The increase is based on our usages and their costs. Those costs are audited by the Alliance um, Audit Committee. That's fine, but if they yes. could give us some common language explanation of food costs are up this much, okay. your increased usage is this much. Right. There's the some calculation there that we don't know. That's the explanation of the numbers that I want yeah. her to be able to give to you. So yes. I'd like to suggest that we tonight okay. we approve produce, temporary staffing services, frozen yogurt novelties, and chemicals that would only leave the milk and the food and supplies for the first week of August. I've never seen a temporary staffing services or frozen yogurt novelties contract. <laughs> We've always had that some kind of a. I've never seen it before. There also used to be a bread contract. Is that still there? Bread or? is now rolled into um, the food and supplies bid. Okay. Oh, that's part of it then too. That the is that part of it or isn't it? Because I. It wasn't, and I'm it, not sure what not, year was that that was done. I don't know if that was done this current year or if that was oh, done so. prior. Now that would be an interesting uh, thing it was, to It know. wasn't in last year, so. Yeah. And so I think if it's not approved until August 5th, does that cause you a problem to be able to be ready for school? Yes. On, uh, it does. We, we, oh. we cannot, from my understanding, we cannot um, order anything without a contract, so I would have to approach these vendors and ask for a contract okay. extension. Last year it came to us in August. Hmm? I'm sorry. <laughs> Last year it came to us in August. What day was it? It was. It was August 6th. Yeah, I know one of the things Miss Allman said when she was new is that she definitely wanted to do this in July so mm -hmm. she wouldn't be under the gun in August. So that was one of the reasons that we actually changed that. And so I have concerns based on what <coughs> we've said here that that's tight and that we can't really get out of this consortium anyway. So even if the answer is something that you don't like, we're in the middle of this alliance that I'm not sure we can exit from. And if we do, we certainly can't exit and do a contract and feed people on the first day of school, right? Correct. So I'm not sure the delay, I, I'm not sure the delay helps us in feeding kids on the first day. Now we will certainly try to send the explanation and try to answer it, but today if we don't pass it, we still can't change the alliance price and feed people on the first day of school. So I'm not sure why we would wait. That just pushes it back for something that still has to be ready to feed people on the first day of school, right? Um, in, in addition to summer and, um, of course, Wolf Meadow, of course, that goes the first week is under the previous contract. But, yes, I totally agree. The explanation is 110%. I'll be happy to provide all of that in the history and everything. But I'm not sure that we'll be able to find additional milk vendors. I, I would be surprised. I don't think we will. Can, can I ask a question too, just because mm -hmm. I don't have a lot of history on this either. But so to Rob's point, the, the frozen yogurt novelties and innovative concessions. So it says the renewal year on this is one of four. Correct. Which means that we just started last year. frozen yogurt novelties. When, why did we start? What is that? Like what uh, are we? The Yo Dots. The Yo Dots. It's not something that is part, anytime you have something that's not offered by your mainline distributor like Gordon Food Service, you have to do a separate bid in order to increase um, competition and um, make sure you've got the best price. Yeah, I know we've had the novelties on here before. Maybe it came from the milk vendor before. I don't know. Possibly. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking sure. it was a separate presentation because it was a new product. And actually, I think you're right. I think it might have actually been mid-year. Yeah, I now, think it was. Now that I think about that. And the temporary staffing <laughs> services may not have been. Um, I've just gone under the... Um, temporary staffing was mm -hmm. an irregular period of time, too. It wasn't might the first been. of the year. It was something mm -hmm. we worked through. It was probably a mid-year contract. Right, and it looks like it's essentially a five-year contract. You do the contract, and then you can renew it four times, and then you have to do another one, right? I mean, that's kind of... That is correct, and it's usually to the district's advantage to renew because if you have to go out for bid again, you're going to get a higher fixed fee. Okay, board, there, there's a good point about she needs to be able to buy food. Um, no, we were able to do it last year in August. I think we can still do it this year in August. 
but it can't change in August. That's the only thing I want to make sure we're, we're saying. So if we say, okay, we don't like the explanation for Gordon food in this, in the Alliance, then we say, okay, we don't like it. Now on August 5th, we're essentially saying, we don't want to be in this Alliance anymore. Now we got to put out another bid. We cannot put out another bid and have that back and have food on the first day of school. It's not possible. No. So we cannot change it and have food ready on the first day of school. Um, and it's obviously an ideal situation to be able to start now. So I understand the board has some questions and it, it sounds like they will be glad to send them all, but we can't have a different result and feed people on the, on the first day of school, right? I mean, that's where we're at. Um, doesn't mean we can't change things for next year. Doesn't mean that we can't do lots of other things, but we cannot change from the, the alliance that we have in front of us and have food on the first day of school. So I, I don't know why we would delay yeah, that I'm if it's not an option. How, we, how you said earlier, this is, you haven't budgeted for this yet. How does that make any sense? We don't have to budget for anything. Well, do we have a budget? I mean, we have no, a budget. We don't, budget. Have budget. we don't have a food budget, but we're going to be not buying, buying food. We don't have a budget out. at all yeah. until the state. So then how do we buy food anyway? So because, we, because you approved a continuing budget resolution. Yeah. That's how. Okay. I'll be happy to help make 33,000 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, <laughs> in theory. Thank you. But shouldn't we get some food on the tables for these children okay. first day of school? Okay, pending Folk. the, okay, what, can we move forward with approving the four items tonight, get the additional explanation for the work session in August, knowing that we need to move forward with them, although we may have a what, much what, better what, what understanding. What four items? The four items would be produce, temporary staffing, which is a year two, the frozen yogurt novelties, and the chemicals. Yes, for me. Okay. General agreement before we do a motion? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I just had one question. I just want yeah. to be sure I understand what you would like for me in, uh, you would like an explanation from Gordon's on if what, they can give you some ideas, yeah. Some ideas on what they are facing, why they are having price increases. Mm -hmm. um, when Confirming when the bread was incorporated into the bid, mm -hmm. uh, into the food and supplies bid, um, and any other things. I'll go back and do some research on if there was anything else that was absorbed into that bid, because that is allowed if you don't have anyone who wants to bid. Okay. Um, and then um, what is it exactly that you'd like me to do on the milk bid? Again, rechecking um, <coughs> sources, you know, uh, again, checking on more dairies or anything, what you can find, why you can't locate these other dairies or anything other sources for milk on these dairies uh, are telling me, you know, uh, you know, Prairie Dairy are the ones that you, I know you're showing one, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Why, why, you know, is, you know, you, you said some of them bounced back. Uh, we weren't able, and once they bounced back, we reached out to try to locate someone at the company to find a new person. Uh, one of them, the Southern Bell, that was a second email we had received. It also bounced back. I could find nothing on the company. We called some districts around to see who they bid with. Uh, most of them were Paul Campbell. I don't recall off the top of my head what Kannapolis does. Um, so anytime we got any of those um, emails that were rejected, we tried to find somebody at that company. Dean Foods, we couldn't even find anybody. We called, they didn't know the person, they didn't know who to go to. Turns out Dean Foods is the parent company of PET. So um, my understanding is they probably, this is a guess, this is mine, they would have probably referred us to one of their distributors anyway. Um, I was basing it off of um, vendors that I was aware of and um, vendors that were on the previous uh, list that we had send, sent bids to the last time milk was bid. But whatever research, but like I say, like I say, just checking and just letting us know on those type things. Okay. And like I say, uh, the, some of the other, and, and a list of the school systems you did call and okay. stuff like that, if you could yeah, do that. Yeah, and perhaps they've experienced the same thing. You know, if, if the pet distributors, if they were bought up by, say, Dean, you know, anytime there's less competition from different companies because now a parent company bought the other ones, you're going to have less bids because they're all under the same umbrella. And so. is pet the only milk? I mean, why do you have to have pet? You don't have to have pet. You can have other ones if they're willing to bid. Um, pet is um, 
<laughs> the most common one in this area. Okay, but mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've maybe that, you need. I've heard to that you've, the... you've done your due diligence. I, I, I know it. I know yeah. I'm very confident but, that you've done your you know, due diligence. If, if not, maybe you need to go to another milk. I might, you know, and and maybe that's the. Well, the thing. It, there's no time to go to other vendors. It's difficult. Okay, thank okay. you very much. So, board members, I'll take a motion that the bids for produce, temporary staffing services, frozen yogurt novelties, and chemicals be approved as presented. Okay. Can Mr. you pull Harrison? the chemicals out separately, please? What was the question on that? That's actually that's a, a low same. number. It's only it's low number, but it's only one bid, please. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the amount of effort, and we don't have another oh, option. Okay, so okay, why don't we take understand. that one off her plate for now? It's the lowest it's amount. Huh? Why don't we take that one off her plate now and let that one? Well, it's if the same you just amount. do that one separately, do the other ones, and then just do this chemical by itself. Okay. So we'll go back to the motion and the second. So, Mr. Harrison, will you amend the motion amend to it. only approve produce, frozen, temporary staffing services, and frozen yogurt novelties? Okay. And Mr. Walter, you second that? Okay. So all in favor of the th approving the three, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that motion passes. Now for the chemicals, I'll take a motion to approve that bid. So moved. Okay, I'll second that one. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? No. Okay, so that one's a 5-1. Okay, then that leaves us the food and supplies and the milk. And Ms. Alman, you have some questions, obviously, to, you know, get us some additional information on, and then hopefully we'll be all set at that first meeting in August. Yes, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. you. Yes. This question, when you report back in August, can you also uh, bring a description of that purchasing alliance and how that works? Certainly, I can give you that right now. What would you like to? Well, just something in writing. Oh, certainly. Understand exactly mm -hmm. yeah. understand the process better. Yes. Absolutely. So if you're part of the alliance, it obligates you to use a certain list of vendors, and then once the vendors are in that alliance, um, they can, you know, provide the fixed cost, whatever they deem is necessary, and then basically all the buyers agree to buy from those vendors. So you have an option, annual option. Excuse yourself out of that alliance or not. Those types of details, how that works. Well, is that something the board would have to approve to enter into that agreement, or is that? Likely. It's likely that you so. probably approved it when it was originally done. Mm -hmm. um, it would not really. I served on the board of the Procurement Alliance for five years and um, chaired it one year. and. I have not seen a district have any significant advantage to withdraw from the alliance. Typically the costs go up. Um, more often than not, the more and more districts are joining the alliance because of the financial advantage, especially um, with the mainline distributor. I'm just trying to, but yes, uh, absolutely. I guess, anticipate any possible questions. Yes, sir. The more information we have mm -hmm. brought to that meeting, the better off we'll be, I think, to understand the process. Absolutely. Okay, thank you, Ms. Alma. Yes, ma'am. Okay, board members, we are now at the end of our open session. I'll take a motion that the board convene in closed session to consult with an attorney and preserve the attorney client privilege pursuant to General Statute 143, 318, 1183, and to consider confidential personnel matters pursuant to General Statute 143, 318, 1186. And, and, and Mr. Law, could, I, could that be amended to add consider student matter? Something I just realized I want to just about. That would okay. be under 143.318.11a and the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Okay. I'll make the motion as it was just stated. Okay. I'll second it. Mr. Walter made the motion. Mrs. Carpenter made the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, thank our viewing audience and those present here. Have a good evening and we'll continue our meeting down the hall.